Come on ahead, I need people. Need people? Okay. Thanks. Issaquah Police Department. Called us and told us that it definitely was before anybody else did. And uh, somehow it did get out in the papers and one of the law enforcement, I don't even remember which department it was, made the comment <laughs> in the paper that we haven't identified yeah, them like yet. That perhaps Mr. Rancourt is rushing the death certificate. I'll never forget that. Yeah. And when in fact I... They sent the remains up, and I forewarned them. I said, this stuff is coming, and I want you to take care of it. And I want you to let me know as soon, I don't care what time of day or night, as soon as you're absolutely positive that those remains are my daughter, I want to know because I've got nothing but garbage from all these other people. And so obviously he did. The family did this for a long time, young man. He had done the dental work. And he had yes. done, we had, uh, yes. before she went off to school, she'd had a, a very elaborate bridge work, gold inlaid bridge work done. So there was no question that it was her. Yeah. Work. Yeah. Brought the only camera that didn't work. Okay. okay. It's Dale Rancourt, right? Correct. Right. And Vivian. Mm -hmm. When we were talking on the phone uh, yesterday, you said, I mean, you've you've basically known 99.9% .9 all these years that it was Ted Bundy. No question in my mind. Why not? Well, I think the reason that... Uh, that we felt that way was simply because everything pointed to it. You know, if, if you recall the, the stuff that he was involved in in Utah and in Colorado and then, you know, ultimately down in Florida, that the way he did things, the way he presented himself, um, modus operandi, whatever you want to call it, there was just no question about uh, th that kind of a person was the kind of person that had gotten our daughter and these other girls here in Washington. And then when they, it all came out that he had been here and lived here and had gone to university and what, he'd gone to Western, I guess, and a couple other things. And he was active in, in the community and everything. And he was very personable. His name was Ted. And, it all matched. And in my mind, there was no question about right. it. And it if, when you talk to the law enforcement people off the record, uh, they would say the same thing, you know, that they were just almost certain that that. Le leading up to the last, before you got the call from Keppel yesterday, what were your thoughts about about him being executed before you and other families knew to the absolute certainty that it was him? Well, we didn't have, neither Vivian and I had any trouble with that because we were positive. I mean, in our mind, we were positive. We had hoped that, that he would confess to anything because, you know, there's a lot of folks around who have youngsters that have disappeared over the years and have no idea what's happened to them that they're, they're gone, okay? Maybe they've just run away to a commune. Maybe they're, uh, they've had family problems and they just, they're into the drug scene or, you know, whatever reason. And they're alive, but they're, they choose not to contact home, which is sometimes happens. But 
I think that if he know, knows anything relative to youngsters that are gone and that he's harmed, that the, then the people need that peace of mind to know for sure. We didn't need that. We don't need that. If he never says a thing, if he never had said a thing and they executed him on Tuesday, we would know in our own minds that this was the guy. But he did say so. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And did, did that do anything for you? Uh, just reaffirmed what we had reaffirmed. thought. It made us feel better that if he's talking to these people, like I say, that there are others who are going to find out for sure that aren't sure. You know, here there's still a couple of girls they haven't found their bodies and what have you, and, and so they assume that they're that they're still alive. I suppose that's uh, the law says you have to do that. But no added bit of relief for you that for some of the the children there was for a couple of our sons there was a, maybe a trace of doubt that yeah, our oldest son I think had difficulty accepting the fact that that it actually had happened. I mean, you know, let's face it, we all try to to hope in one thing or another, but I think it probably helped him, yes, that this guy finally has said that he's done it. And our youngest son and even our oldest daughter made the comment that well, now that he's confessed, I don't know whether I should believe him or not. Yeah, that's another interesting do point. You, do, you, do you believe it? I believe it. I believe that he I did that, but he could confess to all kinds of good things. Can I ask you a favor? I'm going to speak one at a time because he's, he's having a hard time keeping up with you. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, I, I lost my I lost it. Um, well, let me ask Vivian. You believe it. You, you do believe it? Yes. Yes. And tell me why. All the evidence um, before he was even picked up in Florida, pointed to him. And his method was such that um, that would have been the only kind of person that Susan would have gone off with, someone that needed help. And that was the method that he used. And there just wasn't any question. He was clean cut. Um, he was the kind of person that someone like Susan would have believed in, would have trusted and gone off with. And there were two girls on campus that um, he had approached before Sue. And this came out, what, a year after she disappeared? Um, that said that he had approached them on crutches and asked them to carry his books. And she would have done that. Did the phone call last night help you out at all? I can't say that it... I, I could have lived without the phone call. I'm glad that they did call and inform us before we saw it on the news. But... Um, but to know that it came from Ted Bundy's lips, that he said he did it. Yeah. I think I what think it is, <clears throat> is that it's oh, like yeah. a big puzzle that's been going on for 14 years for us. There's two pieces left. There were two pieces. One was the absolute, absolute from the words of the perpetrator. The other will be his execution. And then the puzzle is complete. And I think that's why when the call came, it just put that one more piece of the puzzle in. Do you, do you suspect any motive on his part that he is talking? Oh, definitely. I think he's buying time. He's trying to buy time. I think it, he's hoping that that through this process that uh, Utah or Colorado or Washington or some state where he has uh, murdered some girls might say, well, hold it. We need to talk to him and convince the state of Florida that he should uh, have a little more time to confess or whatever. And that uh, he's trying to buy time. I think that that's the important thing is that he wants time. And certainly... That's what, exactly what he's trying to do. Did you have any particular thoughts about the death penalty before all this happened to your family? Very strong thoughts, you bet. You bet. We both feel. For that, or against. Well, we both penalty. feel that no one has the right to take another person's life. No one. For whatever reason. 
However, I personally think that it's appropriate to have the death penalty in cases such as this. And that it's, it's, a, it's something that need, we need to have. Vivian feels that the death penalty is, is just not the thing to do. And she said many times that even though she, she wants to see him executed, she really doesn't believe in the death penalty, she would just as soon we had a Devil's Island type penal colony that we could put him in and forget about him. Where they he, wouldn't have a chance at so many appeals. You know, this up and up. This is the fourth time. I mean, even short of a death penalty, you'd like to see him told, you have no more appeals, Ted. This is your right. future. Right. That's the end of the road. That's you been have no more rights. Yeah, that's been agonizing. But even, even in spite of all this, you're not firmly in favor of the death penalty. I don't... I can't say that it is the best way to go. I don't know what the best way to go is. I know our justice system needs to take a real hard look at it because it allows the lawyers to... What, what's your objection to the death penalty? The time, um, the taking of someone's life, um, the time that it takes, all this process that they go through to make certain that uh, the criminal has every, every right um, it's just a yo-yo. It's just up and down and up and down. Do when, you know, society has said, okay, this is what we want, then we better carry through with it. Do you have any particular thoughts about Ted Bundy as a human being? Do you think he, do you even think of him as a human being? Or? I think he's a very sick person very sad, sick person. And I'm really sorry for him. I'm sorry for his family. For his mother. You don't sound like you hate him, though. I do hate him. Think of what his mother must be going through. Think of what his mother must be going through. And there's a lady that needs, that needs some sympathy and support, not Ted Bundy. And you have sympathy. For her, not him. Not in a heartbeat, not him. He made these choices deliberately. He planned them, he carried them out. He knew beforehand that he was going to do it again. And undoubtedly and, enjoyed every minute of it. Yes. So they say. And one last question. You're glad for the sake of other families as well that he's at least talking now. Yes. We went through a year of not knowing, of searching and pleading with people, uh, putting ourselves on the front page, so to speak, opening our lives. Plus, you know, do you know what it's like for those other families? Okay, I'm sorry, I won't no, you anymore. Right. Just, just the trauma of it, you know, going through it. You never tuck it away. When you have a certain amount of finality, uh, when we found uh, the, the remains and everything, that was a real finality to this thing. Uh, as, you know, one of the, of the uh, near final processes. And it helped us to, to deal better. But the year we looked, that was, it was trauma. Because you never give up hope and you just you keep looking and keep looking. And other families have been through 15 years. Of That's right. Yes, yes. In a way, we have too. Uh, it's, um, it's been 15 years of a nightmare. We, you know, if, if this tragedy had happened and we were able to have seen her perpetrator dealt with and we had buried her and that was the end of it, then we could tuck it away and go on. But it's been up and down. We buried her three times. And it's yes. never really ended. And it's never ended. We were told after uh, they did find her remains that uh, 
they needed to keep her remains, so they advised us to go ahead and have the memorial service, which did help a lot of our friends and family. Five years down the road, we get a call and they release her remains. So we take care so of those. So we take <clears throat> care of that. We go through it again. Two or three years ago, I can't even remember when it was now. About three years ago. They called us again and said, I'm sorry, we made a mistake. We still have some of her remains. So we did it again. So that part of it's done, hopefully. I'm sure it is. So but it's, it's just been up and down. Uh, it's never... It's never been um, completely over for us. You know, and all this time, every three different times he's been, he's had an execution date. And we sit and we wait. For justice. And then it, you know, we sit and wait some more. And if they execute him, that'll end it for you. That'll end it. <laughs> 